Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thor Darchild, and welcome back to Let's Replay Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, which was last time, which was probably the shortest I've ever done in an Ace Attorney episode. We cross examined our client and found out that she really was the forger and that her father was the face. He's that are usually uh, shown for the work. However, when uh, getting to certain parts of her work, like maybe her first job uh, that wasn't a painting, Prosecutor Gavin started to get act not acting like himself. And... While she, he was questioning her, she started to get nervous while biting her nails. And then, when we least expected it, and tried to ask her any more questions, she passed out. Apparently, she was somehow poisoned with the same poison that killed her father, but she is just barely alive. And now, to find out more about what happened seven years ago, as we continue on with the case. This episode is going to take place seven years ago, when we learned what happened when Phoenix Wright loses his ace attorney's, loses his ba attorney's badge. Get ready, folks. Where things are about to take a turn for the interesting. Seven years ago, trial part one. Showdown time. I lost. It's only a game of poker, a game I've played for a long time, and only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Well, it seems I've found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why, yes! over a game of cards. That was how we first met, seven years ago. Seven years earlier, Phoenix Wright's final trial. April 19th, 2019, 9.27 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew. Okay. It's been a long time since I felt like such a rookie. Gotta try to relax. Ah, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. S I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received your files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand I am asking you the impossible of you. Well, yes. You haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. Oh, morning, Daddy. Ah, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you. <laughs> I'm fine, as always. 
this old boy is here to help me after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, old boy. Huh? Me? Look what he started. Um, uh, here. What's this? It seems Fate's clock won't make me wait a little longer. At least only less than ten swift minutes rain, remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I'll give thanks. Farewell. Magnifi Grammarai. I don't know. Oh, I just got it over there, her in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit and spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or such mu some such? Hmm. Not from the looks of it. What is this? It looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. Well, do you feel... How do you feel about today? Tr the trial today? We'll get through it, somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, uh, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true thoroughbred, thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of attorneys before the trial. I know it is dif a difficult situation I put you in, but... Allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, do, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a prepped speech. I'll do what I can. <laughs> I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. Uh, impossible? Yes. Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday. And the information I was given had a, was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can, for their sakes. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright! My client is Shadi Enigmar. Known to the world as Zach Grammarai. A wildly popular magician star in Troop Grammarai. His mentor, Magnifi Grammarai, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. And Zach Grammarai is the suspect. Court is now in session for the trial of Shoddy and Nygmar. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Is the prosecutor ready? I was just thinking, is this a... 
Is this what all the fuss is about? A bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is someone... Is this some kind of new crime? One of the worst. This is a trial, yeah? Where are the sweaty palms? The pouncing... The pounding hearts? The governor's concert got ten times the thrill this gig got. Who... Were you again? Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started. Legally, yeah? Gavin. Defense attorney... Christoph Gavins? Ah, figures my bro who's more famous in this part of town. Clavier Gavin. Lead singer of the mega hit hit band, the Gavners. You're out of your league, rock boy. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your lead, rock boy. True, my debut single, 30, 13 years hard time for love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, ya. Yeah? Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Eero Rocket accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up, Air Attorney Wright. Perhaps we... Perhaps you should be so kind as to fill us in on this case. Ashtag, baby! Time to call on the opening act! What was his name again? Ah, yes! Detective Duck Gumshoe! Hit it! And you are? Hey! You know... You were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time, no see. Hey, you! Huh, huh? Me? Today's the day, pal. Today, I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? What? You normally lack confidence in your testimony. Yeah, detective. This is my sage. Can the antics. Huh? All this hey youing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Ugh. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back, in the room of the General Hospital. The facts are as simple as they can. There's, uh, there's the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and BAM! Lights out! Them's the facts! Hmm... Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifi Grammarai, was a famous man! He had an entire country under his magic spell, as it were. Ah, oh, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation, and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Yes, though I'm sure you, the youngsters today, know his disciples even better. I disarray true grammar I has made made quite a name for themselves. Anyhow, the retired Magnifi's been in the hospital for the last year. 
Hmm, what was it? A male ignorant ooter or something. Doing something to his liver, I think. Yeah. A male ignorant tumor, perhaps? In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Hmm. The facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door? Why shoot him? I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with the pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Hmm. I believe the question before us is clear, then. Why did the killer have to shoot at this dying man? The one reason could he add? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting? Yes, sir. The circumstances. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent the sent her a letter ordering him his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him, him and shot the old man in the forehead. A bullet was fired from the pistol who found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. W what You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here a letter of in question. We'll need to take a look at that later. Very unusual indeed. Although Oh, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull the trigger? I wonder. I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of its letter. Ah, you cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gunshu, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing's better... One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why come and see... Why have come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Herr Attorney. Well, was there a reason? As it turned out, there was. Every night, he for a half hour, starting at 11, the victim, Magnifi Grammarai, was given an IV. An IV? 
there it is in the picture, off to the side of, of the bed. At 11, the doctor would come in to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. So that was the only time they could have met without what, the chance of an untimely interruption? During his IV? Very well, shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. Just because he got a letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead, after all, just as he meant, as he had, as he had commended. It could be a setup. Let's not men. Let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Fine. I can play this slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. And this letter was sent by the victim? There it is! Gotcha! You're all mine this time, pal! Huh? I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's, no mistake! Ah, I see. <laughs> Score one for the boys! I didn't lose. I was just asserting the facts. So why am I so annoyed? What? A letter ordering his own death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, Your Honor. So anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thing for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Oh, get that noggin cracking. You failed to grasp the consent of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shot in the forehead, loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, Baby, you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal! You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people is bad, detective. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows that it had been fired recently. Well, Mr. Wright? As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. The photo? Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in this... in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, Mr. Enigmar shot something else. 
Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal! That's why the defendant popped him in the forehead. Oh? Uh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could take. What? And you can prove that with this photo? I can prove I have had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what else did the defendant shoot? Well, what do you think it was? Take that! The clown doll? Take a look. Take a closer look, see? It's been shot in the forehead, too! Ah! There's a hole in its forehead! Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's con claim. Ha! Huh. And I suppose you have a reason as to why he shoot the clown doll? He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Ah! Uh. Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead! The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead, it definitely looks like it's as it was shot. Bailiff, send someone to investigate this matter. I admit I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean that the that he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have have to shoot the forehead as ordered. But the letter her saying nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. The bullet hole in the clown's hound doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue. Yet, Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure her, the defendant didn't shoot the vo victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into you account as you continue your testimony. So what if he shot the clown? Um, he still shot the victim, pal. Oops, that was the last testimony there, huh? He might he be my only source of information. Better pay attention and read this letter carefully. Actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant went in 
the defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene. No doubt about it. You must mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one. It's a funny looking gun. There's no mistake in that. We compared the bullets taken in from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did! And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir! Why are you so certain? A pile of sand as your head been... What pile of head as your... Head... What pile of sand as your head been stuck in all this time, pal? You never heard of the... Uh, Zack and Valen's quick draw shoot him? Huh? What's that? One of the defendant's specialties. Zack and Valen stand on either side of a girl. Then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. Indeed, they hit everything else on stage. This is one of the pistols they use on the show. Got a great design, huh? The kids love it. Many boys and girls join the police because of that pistol, I hear. You know, that would explain a lot of the police for about the police force. True Grammarai stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here it is. Well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm. It looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, you can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty and it shows traces of being fired recently. So, were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that, the, that a lack of fingerprints is, in fact, a fingerprint of its own. Aha! Intriguing point! Well made! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who oh, not well made, not intriguing! In any case, the court accepts this evidence. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. So what if the clown was shot? So what if he shot the clown? Um, he still shot the victim, pal. Oh, yeah? Objection! The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Y yeah but like I just said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol hope provide proves he couldn't. The murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, your honor. 
This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah! If he had shot the clone in the forehead, then he couldn't have shot the victim too! Yar! Th that's not a contradiction, not even close! All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot. Oh, where did he get the extra bullet? <laughs> They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it! Uh. <laughs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet, beyond my good looks and sir sterling, startling record sales. And utter luck of lack of humility. Hmm. Oh, what's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Air Detective was just the warm-up act. Ugh. Now, the uh, now the audience now that the audience has been given a taste of what to come, they're ready. Ready for what? For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who you will find can prove one thing for us. That Greg Z Zach Grammarai who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15 minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zach. Court is adjourned. To be continued. Okay. Nah, I don't have time to keep going. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Let's Replay Phoenix Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. When we come back, we will be doing Seven Years Ago Trial Part 2. Thank you so much for joining me to the end. If you like this video and would love to see more, Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment if you want. Ring that bell to be notified when our next video comes out. All this helps my channel to grow so you guys have more videos to enjoy. We do new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and occasionally Saturday and Sundays. Until the next video, this is Sora Darkchild, signing off. Have a good night, folks.